Shashi Sensei. What's up you guys, Ty Jordan here. We're just under 20 weeks out of the NPC Midwest Championships in St. Louis. We're here at the Foundation in Liberty, Missouri. We're about to train some chest. I've got my training partner, Danny Tucker with me. Energy's super high, motivation is through the roof. I'm ready to get it. So uh, without further ado, let's get it on. What's up you guys? So first movement of the night, it's gonna be the Smith Incline Bench Press. This is a movement I'm very comfortable going very heavy on. Very important that I feel safe and comfortable to push my first movement all the way to the brink. So you're gonna see me really load the bar up tonight here on the first one. Uh, we're gonna worry about getting our pump later on in the night. So guys, I think it's very important on your first exercise of the night that you make sure you warm up amply. You'll see that I'm taking a quarter off the bar here and I'm replacing it with a plate. I'll typically make plate jumps all the way up to a top set on most exercises. But again, on that first one, it's very important you get the proper amount of warm ups in to save yourself from some of the injuries that I've occurred in the past. I'm getting ready to run my last warm up. It's only gonna be a two rep set. This is just kind of a final feeler. Make sure the nervous system's ready to go for the top set weight. I don't wanna waste any additional energy on this sub-maximal set though, so I'm gonna cut it off at two. So I'm getting ready to take on my top set here. It's just three plates per side tonight. Not as strong as we typically are in the off season, but we're still trying to push the weight as strong as we can. It's very important when you enter your dieting phase that you try to deliver the same exact stimulus that you were delivering all off season long so that muscle doesn't run on you. Now I advise if you're gonna take on progressive overload top set style training, you gotta make sure mentally you're willing to train like there's a gun to your head. Top set, back off set complete. We got a lot more work to do, so we're gonna move it on. Next up is the Arsenal plate loaded fly, so we'll see you there. I did my first national show in Strongman when I was 19, right? Or, yeah. I'm sorry, when I was 18. I had done my first contest ever about a week after I graduated. Uh, I took second place. I'd never tried the events before, never done any Strongman, but Figured, hell, I'll give it a shot. It went pretty well. So my friends convinced me to hop in the car with them, drive up to Chicago for the Teenage Nationals that summer. And still real wet behind the ears, did my very best. Found myself in position to maybe take top five going into the final event of the contest, right? Which was an Atlas Stones event. So I'm coming up on the final stone of a five stone series. And 
I actually shat my pants trying to lift the fifth atlas stone. And so I'm literally about to just like walk away from the event because it's like, well, fuck. I don't know if I sharded. I don't know if I actually really shit myself. I don't know how bad it is. I need to go do damage control. But there's still like 20 seconds on the clock. So my two buddies that came up to Chicago with me are like, what are you doing? Like, load that fucking stone. It's a stone I've loaded like 20 times, right? So I walk back up to it with my butt clenched because I'm like afraid of whatever's going to happen, right? And I try to pick it up like that a couple times. No luck. So anyways, the event ends. I end up in eighth place, run to the bathroom immediately, start trying to assess the damage. Well, if you know anything about stone lifting and strongman, you have to apply the tack and tacky for yeah. all the forms to be able to grip the stone. So first thing I do when I go to get some toilet paper is I end up getting toilet paper stuck all over my arms. So now I have two problems. I have shit all over my ass and toilet paper stuck all over my arms. And I don't know what to clean up first, how to do it. Anyways, it took me about two hours to clean up all the tacky, all the toilet paper, all the shit. Then I had to jump back in the car, drive home to Kansas City from Chicago, empty handed. But there's a bright spot to the story. So I came back a year later yeah. where it was held in Boston, Massachusetts. And I won the event outright and became the 2009 Teenage Heavyweight National Championship in Strongman. So happy ending. We're trying to maximize the blood volume here in the pecs. We want to really feel this. We're trying to disengage the shoulders, disengage the arms get everything we can out of the pecs before moving on. So we're gonna say put right here. questions I get asked all the time is what do I think about rest times and the answer to that is kind of complicated so early on in the workout performance is what I value over just about everything else so I like to make sure that I'm amply rested I'm not in any type of oxygen debt and I'm ready to give that set my very very all now for an exercise like this where weight and performance is not the end-all be-all but the amount of blood I can drive into the muscle is of premium importance that's when I minimize my rest times when we tap in, tap out, and we keep the intensity as high as we can. This is the point in the workout where we're really focused on trying to drive a lot of blood into the muscle. We've already moved our weight for the night. So what you're gonna see here on my top set is gonna be a drop set. So I've got Danny ready to go behind me. I'm gonna give this weight everything I've got. Danny's gonna strip a couple of quarters off. I'm gonna rest about five to 10 seconds. Then I'm gonna jump right back in, continue to give everything I've got until I've hit mechanical failure. So here we go.
you guys. So we're on to the fourth and final movement of our chest workout. We're on the Arsenal pec deck fly. Similar theme as to the third movement we just did. We're trying to drive a lot of blood. You're gonna really see me try to get a really, really deep quality contraction on each and every one of these reps before we move it on the shoulder. So here we go. All right, you guys, so we just wrapped up some chest. We're moving on to shoulders. I've got a couple of dumbbells here. We're about to go into some side lateral raises. Now, the reason that I like to train my shoulders with my chest is because if you can tell, shoulders are a very dominant body part for me. With all my training time being very, very important, I can't a lot of full training session to just my shoulders, so I've got to tack them onto a bigger body part like chest. But I would advise if your shoulders are not a strong point like they are for me, you devote a full day to training your shoulders. So another good question, why am I doing lateral raises with 35s? Well, while I consider shoulders a strong body part for me, I have a six foot five wingspan. So when these weights hit peak contraction and lateral raise, they're pretty far away from my center mass. So it's a pretty good bet that I'm gonna start using some ancillary muscle groups to complete that rep. And that's not what we're trying to do here. We fit our chest, we fit our delts. We're gonna start here with the plate loaded tricep dip. I like to get the tricep started here because this is a nice movement that ties in everything we worked on up to this point. We hit a little chest here, we feel some delts, but of course we isolate the triceps at the finish. So let's get it started. So guys, we're gonna finish with a single arm tricep press down. This has been a personal favorite of mine. I really feel like this movement isolates the medial head of the tricep back here, and you can never be too big on the back of the arm. The tricep is two thirds of the arm, so make sure you hammer the absolute shit out of it if you wanna have big arms. any asymmetry in any one of your limbs, it's really important that you incorporate some unilateral training to try to balance that out. It's not gonna correct itself on its own. We've wrapped up our chest, shoulder, and tricep workout. Now we're working on some post-workout posing in preparation for the NPC Midwest Championships. Now I don't profess to be an expert at posing, but I do have some tips and some takeaways that's gonna help you with your posing on your individual bodybuilding journeys. So first and foremost, it's very important that you understand the strengths and weaknesses individual to your own physique, because you're gonna be trying to highlight your strengths and hide your weaknesses as best as you can. Now, the next tip I have for you, I think it's also very important to try to find a physique that reminds you in some facet of your own and try to mimic some of their posing styles and some of the ways that they try to highlight the attributes of their physique. That's gonna be a very important way for you to kind of bridge your way into figuring out how to present your physique to the very best of your potential.